In this video, I want to show you the writing tools that I use most often when I'm researching, drafting, and writing essays. We've talked a lot about an ideal writing workflow, and I want to show you how I use these tools to implement this workflow. The writing tool that I use the most is Scrivener. The tool that I use the most for collecting and organizing research materials is Evernote. Let's start with Scrivener. Scrivener is a writing application that's been around since about 2006, originally for the Mac, but there's now a Windows version. It was designed to support the writing workflow of authors of various types, including novelists, screenplay writers, fiction and nonfiction essayists, and just about anyone who writes long-form, structured documents. The program has a ton of features, and it wouldn't be helpful or possible to run through them all here. But I'll show you the key features that are relevant to the kind of writing workflow that we've been discussing in this course. Just to review, this workflow emphasizes two principles. Number one, synchronized outlining and draft writing modes, where changes in the outline of a document are reflected in the draft text and vice versa. And two, easy access to research materials while writing. So you can easily refer to documents or websites or whatever research materials you may have while you're writing. Let's see how Scrivener implements these principles. Here's what it looks like when you open up a new blank document. The sidebar on the left is called the binder, and it comes with three folders a draft folder, a research folder, and a trash folder. Sections of your document will go in the draft folder. That's where you assemble the actual text of the document you're writing. You can either add folders or individual text files. Here I've added a text file. You can title it, and any text that is typed into the editing window is part of that text file. Now I'll build a dummy organizational structure. So I'll add an introduction, three sections in the main body, and a conclusion. And each section will contain three subsections. Right now this is a flat structure, it's all at the same hierarchical level. But you can drag and drop any text file into another text file to create any kind of hierarchy you want. So we can move the subsections inside the main sections, and now we've got something that looks like a hierarchically structured outline. Now when we click on a file in the binder, we can edit the corresponding text in that file in the text editor. To illustrate the synchronization between outline and draft writing, let's look at a document that adds some content to these sections. This new document is about dessert recipes. and I've rewritten the titles of these sections, and we're looking at pie recipes, cake recipes, and cookie recipes. And we've got three different pie recipes in the pie section, three cake recipes in the cake section, and so on. Now these look like they're all separate text files, and they are. That's how Scrivener stores them. But we can look at the whole document at once by selecting all of the sections in the binder, or by selecting the top level folder and clicking on the Scrivening's View button in the top toolbar. Now we see all the text elements displayed in one file, separated by a gray line to visually indicate the transition from one section to another. But these line separators are not part of the document, so don't worry about them. You won't see them in the final version. Now the cool thing is that I can edit the text in this view anywhere in the document. So I can work on my draft like I would in any word processor. But I can rearrange sections in the draft just by dragging and dropping the file names in the binder. So for example, I can move cherry pie above apple pie in the binder. And when I look at the draft document again, the cherry pie section comes before the apple pie section. If I want to add a new subsection, I can. Let's say I want to add a fourth pie recipe. You can just click and add a new section, label it pecan pie, and drag it into position. I can now add content to that new section. So this is synchronized outlining and draft writing mode, and Scrivener implements it really well. There's also a dedicated outline view in Scrivener, which you can access if you click the outline view button in the toolbar. You can do a number of cool things in this view, but I won't get into that here. Now before we go on, we should talk about how you're going to export or print your document. This is a topic that is confusing for a lot of people who first start using Scrivener, but the key idea is that Scrivener wants to separate as much as possible the act of writing and the act of formatting for publication. When you're in draft mode, you want to focus on the content and not on formatting details. So what Scrivener does is it has a separate export stage, which it calls compiling. And at that stage, you can specify how you want the document to look. You can export it to a variety of document formats, but you can also export to a variety of formatting and style presets. So for example, the same document can be exported to a plain text file, or a Word file, or, or a PDF file, or an ebook file format if you're creating an ebook. You can also print right from Scrivener, and it's easy to set things up so it looks like a standard formatted essay document. 
But I don't want to get into the details of how to use Scrivener to compile and export. My main concern here is to show you how Scrivener can support our ideal writing workflow. So with that said, let's move on and talk about how Scrivener handles research materials. The folder at the bottom is labeled Research. You can create new text files and folders and put them in this folder, and you can organize them in any way you want. But what's really cool is that you can import just about any file type into this research area, and it becomes a part of the Scrivener document. So you can add PDF documents and Word documents and images and even audio and video files into this research area. And importantly, you can also add web pages. Clicking on the item lets you preview the file in the editing window. For example, when I click on this item, it displays a PDF document, which I just dragged and dropped into the research folder, and which I can now browse. For research documents, I sometimes create a text file that I associate with the document and use that to take notes on the document. I find this is really helpful for keeping track of my notes. Now, when I click on this item, it displays an audio file, which I can listen to right in the program. Welcome to this BBC download of the food program. For information on the BBC's terms and conditions of use, I use this feature to type transcripts from audio or video files when I need them. And these items are links to web pages, which have been imported and which you can browse in the editing window, even if you're offline. Though if you click on a link in the page, it will open the link in your browser. To bring a web page into your Scrivener document, one of the easiest ways is to just highlight the URL of the web page that you're browsing and drag it into the folder where it takes a few seconds to process the import, and then it will display the web page right in Scrivener. So this folder functions as a handy place where you can store and organize your research materials for your project. Now, what makes this even more powerful in Scrivener is the ability to split your screen so you can view two documents at once. You click on this icon in the top right to split the screen. You can load any item into either pane. Click on the top pane to set the focus, and click a text file in the binder. That file is displayed. Click on the lower pane to reset the focus, and now click on one of the research items, say, and it's loaded into the bottom pane. If it's more convenient, you can switch to a vertical split. So now I can write my draft text in the editor while having immediate visual access to my research source. I can paraphrase or summarize or refer to the source. I can even cut and paste if I want to use a direct quotation. This is a very powerful feature of Scrivener that I use all the time when I'm just taking notes and when I'm writing my draft. In later videos, I'm going to show you how I use these features in action as I go through the process of writing an actual essay. But now I want to move on and talk about Evernote, the tool I use for collecting research materials, especially when I'm web browsing. Evernote is a very popular note-taking and archiving application. There are online, a desktop, and mobile versions of the Evernote app. And with an online account, you can synchronize your notes across all your different devices. There are free versions and paid versions, but I'm not interested in the details of how the program works and everything you can do with it, because like Scrivener, it comes with a ton of features that you may never use in your writing. What I want to focus on is how Evernote makes it easy to save notes and web resources while you're browsing and easily find and access those notes later on when you need them. So if I'm thinking of a writing project, say on dessert recipes, then I can add a notebook called Dessert Recipes in Evernote. And that's where I'll store my various notes and links on that topic. Here I'm adding this notebook to the desktop version of Evernote. Now, how do I bookmark a website and add it to this notebook when I'm browsing? The easiest way is to use the web clipping tool that installs in your browser toolbar. It installs automatically in Safari and Internet Explorer when you install the Evernote desktop app on a Mac or a Windows machine. But the clipping tool is also available as an add-on or extension for Chrome and Firefox too. Here I'm using Google Chrome. And the elephant head icon indicates that the Evernote web clipper is installed and ready to use. So when you come across a web page that you want to save for future reference, like this Wikipedia page on desserts, you click the elephant head and a screen pops up that gives you some options for how and in what notebook you want to save the page. I can save the whole article or a simplified version of the article if it has too many widgets cluttering it up or save a selection or just bookmark the page or I can take a screenshot and save that. So if I want to save this article in my dessert recipes notebook, I can do a little search to find that notebook and tell it to save in this notebook. Or I can just tell it to save in my inbox and I can organize the note later. Now I can access this note from my web-based account on any of my devices. If I open my desktop app and click the sync button, it will import any recently added notes and the note appears.
This is how I collect and organize resources while I'm browsing. I may not have Scrivener open. I might just be browsing YouTube on my mobile phone. But if I find a link that I want to save, I can save it to my Evernote account from my phone and forget about it until I need to come back to it later. When I'm ready to start writing, I can go through my Evernote notes and import the ones I want into my research folder in Scrivener. I usually do this just by reopening the note in a browser and dragging that link into Scrivener, but there are other ways of importing Evernote links. So you can see what a nice workflow this creates. I don't need to have Scrivener open all the time. I can do my web browsing and my researching whenever the mood hits. And then I can import those notes into Scrivener and I've ready access to them when I'm actually writing. So to sum up, the writing workflow that I'm looking for is one that allows for synchronized outlining and draft writing and easy access to research materials while I'm writing. Scrivener is the main tool I use for implementing this workflow. Evernote is handy for collecting and organizing research materials when I'm browsing the web or making notes to myself, and it works well with Scrivener in that it's easy to import those notes into the research folder in Scrivener when I want to start writing. Now in the next few videos, I'm going to show you how I use Scrivener to set up and follow a structured approach to essay writing.